There are multiple ways to perform purchase ordering. So let's take a uh, first step and do the easiest one and move ahead to a little bit more difficult and a little more comprehensive, okay? So we're going to go to Options, Administrative, Inventory Maintenance again. And you can see this is where you're going to see pending orders that are occurring for this specific item, and we'll see that in just a second. So let's look up an item. You see we have nine in stock here. If for some reason you just need to do something really quick to sell something, like if uh, you have a setting uh, within the setup screen that says you can't sell items that aren't in inventory and you just need to pull something in, you want to keep that as your main setting, then you could just do this. Press Instant PO and let's go ahead and receive 10. And you see now we have 19 in stock from 9. That's Instant PO. Let's move on to purchase orders. Going to go Administrative purchase orders, you see we have uh, PO number two, and it is open, and then we can go and so we can see if we have any closed ones. So yes, we do have a PO number one, and it is closed, okay? And there's all the specific information, who the vendor was that received the purchase order, and then we can see which type of purchase order do you want to view. Okay, we can see a standard purchase order, a return to vendor purchase order, and a direct store delivery. Now, we're going to get into that in just a second, but I wanted you to see how it's going to operate, okay? Let's create a purchase order. Jumping into the next screen, we'll press Add. And which type of order would you like to add? We'll just do a standard purchase order instead of returning to vendor. OK. We're going to come to this screen. This specific window is going to give us two tabs, General Information and Add Items. So let's go ahead and select a vendor, Allied Beverage Group. And the terms of, of invoicing are going to be right there that we've arranged with them. And we can move into the Add Items tab. OK. There's a few short um, keys that are, are going to help us out a lot in navigating this specific screen, okay? You can definitely select other vendors here to add to a specific purchase order. One of the first things I'd like to show you is the fact that all, these are all of the items associated with this vendor, okay, this Allied Beverage Group. Now, let's look at every item that's at its reorder point, okay? So you see the screen completely changed, and every item that is at its reorder point and has a reorder quantity or a replenish quantity associated with it is going to appear right here. And you see we have the drop down right here or the, uh, uh, the screen right there that we can actually go through and we can, we can select multiples with, by putting control, uh, pressing control or we can do this and use shift. All of the windows function keys are going to work there, okay? Uh, the other thing I'd like to show is that we, when we don't want to look at the reorder point anymore, show all rows will take us back to that original screen that is uh, everything associated, all the items associated with that vendor. Uh, the other thing that you can do is a quick key to, uh, instead of just viewing uh, the items at its reorder point, is pressing reorder low stock items. And that's going to choose every single item that is at its reorder point. So if we were to press this button right here, it's going to auto populate right here. And you see the total cost ordered is right here. So this is the purchase order here. These are the items to choose within it. The other thing I'd like to show you is that you can order items on back order. Also, add new item. Now, this isn't add new item to the purchase order. This is add new item to the system, okay? And we can also add selected items. So let's go back to show all rows. And let's go to this particular one right here, and we'll add that selected item to the purchase order. Another thing that we can do is search for a specific item, okay? And you see this same search, uh, search window is going to appear. And let's reorder some of this as well from a barcode. You can search for it however you'd like, and let's, I just did it that way. This vendor, Allied Beverage Group, is not associated with this item, but let's say we do want to order it from Allied Beverage. We're getting a good deal, so we'll say yes. We'll include that in the purchase order, and we're actually just going to press OK. So the Sprite has been added, and now we can just uh, save this, and that purchase order is ready to go. Hopefully I covered everything, but definitely this is the best way to, to really uh, maneuver and navigate through the purchase order screen. Let's take a minute and discuss changing the quantities within the purchase order, okay? Let's say that your default, the averages throughout the year, you've set at your reorder points and your replenish levels, okay? Now, let's take this margarita uh, for one specific example. This is a seasonal item. It's something that you probably sell more in the summer, and you want to ramp up inventory to be able to, uh, to sell it. So let's look at this specific cell. It says that we're going to order 25. If we click on that individual cell, you'll see this window populate. And let's go ahead and order 50. And you see right here that's changed. 
It's a highly important thing to be able to go ahead and make those specific changes. And now let's actually create a uh, report of this, the actual purchase order, and print it out, okay? Yes, we would like a full-size copy, not just a receipt. And you can see right here the entire purchase order is right here. So let's actually print this, and you can send it to, like if you have like a PDF creator, you can print to that. Always save, save a digital copy of it so you can reference it very quickly. So you can see here's the full digital copy, okay? And the other thing is you can actually export it, and you can export to a Crystal Reports or Adobe Acrobat PDF. Very easy to do. So you can either print or you can actually save it this way by exporting it. And that's how we're going to save those reports. Let's receive some items into inventory from one of our purchase orders. We'll select a purchase order from the purchase order screen, click view, and you see that this purchase order is going to be populated right here. Now, the first thing I'd like to show you is that we can receive item by item in this fashion. We click this, it says enter the line number, uh, and we see that we're at line number one here, so we're going to say OK. Now, it ex we expected to receive six, and that's what's going to show. So yes, we're going to receive six. Quantity received is here. So you can see right here, these are all the quantities that we're going to receive, okay? Now the other thing I'd like for you to see is that we can receive damaged items. We can receive all. Or the other thing that's really great is we could go to the receiving screen. In the receiving screen, it's another way for us to go item by item. We can click the quick scan, and let's go ahead and scan a barcode. And you see that this has one. Now we only have right here, this one right here, we're only ordering one, so let's see what happens if we order more, or uh, more appears. This right here is going to happen. Confirm, this amount will over-receive this line item. Is that okay? For this exercise, let's say yes. But basically what you can do is if you have like a wireless scanner, all you have to do is pull this window up and you can go by and just scan everything. And when you're done, you just say commit all, all the ones that you've scanned. So this is a way of individually scanning and proceeding with uh, all, all the rest of the purchase order. So this, let's go ahead and commit all. And you see right here that we received those two. It's on this line right here, okay? One of the quick keys I'd like to show you is just the receive all portion, okay? We've got another purchase order here. Let's go ahead and receive all, and you can see it went from zeros to all of the specific items. So if you're sure that you got everything, go ahead and press that quick key. You can see it's right there. Now, one of the big keys is to go to update to make sure that everything's been updated within the inventory, and you'll see that your changes have been saved. Press OK and we've gone back to this home screen with the purchase orders. And that is really one of the easiest ways to do it. When you want to associate a specific item with a vendor, you're going to go into this specific screen, the administrative inventory maintenance again, and you can see the ordering info tab, okay? So we have this uh, particular vendor that's already been added, and you can definitely add specific other vendors that you'd like to have in there. So we can add another vendor and choose them, and we're not going to have anything real difficult with a part number. And we have a second one in here. And you see there's a false there and a true on the other one. We're basically going to set this vendor now as the preferred vendor. And you see that it's actually been switched. OK? Very easy to do. That's how you associate an item with a vendor. One last thing I'd like to review that you saw was a huge part of the, the purchase ordering process is under ordering info tab, and you're going to see we have these two items uh, in value here, reorder quantity and reorder level. Okay, let's get, let me give you the flow. The reorder level is here. This is what you have in stock. So basically when we get from 16 to 2, we're going to reorder 12. And that's how the flow is going to work. So you have 16 in stock now. When you get down to 2, you're going to reorder 12, okay? So I just wanted to review that because it is a pretty large portion of the purchase ordering, and I wanted to establish the language. So that's going to do it for ordering.